Wow, Tarantino's yeah. gonna retire. No. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt from Early Work here with Dave per usual. We're what's back. up? We're back with episode two. Uh, today, as you guys can tell, we have a pretty interesting topic. Um, it's kind of how to find a mentor, or if you even need one or when you need one. Uh, we'll kind of delve into this as we go throughout. Dave is my mentor, so that's kind of easy that I can have him right here on the show. So it's easy to, for me to like talk about this topic. We're literally desks apart. Yeah, probably like <laughs> five feet, let's be honest. Yeah. If you heard from the last show, I'm pretty sure that we mentioned briefly that I reached out to you via YouTube comment. Right. So I've always been pushing networking, even since I was young, didn't have any repertoire, portfolio, anything like that. I barely had any skills. By the way, he just showed me some photos of young YouTube Matt and I was dying. <laughs> oh, it, it's some gold. But um, you, but the thing was, he was like, you were heavy into YouTube. Like, I was in college, and I'm like, all right, YouTube's cool. It's down the street in San Bruno, yeah. and I went to school in Santa Clara. It was a novelty, but for you, I'm sure it was more like, yo, this is my world now. Oh, I literally, every day after high school and junior high, I would literally go home, watch my five, six hour long videos on whatever it was, like Dang. Minecraft, vlogging. That's a lot of content. Technology. I would literally sit there all night wow. and just watch content. So... I don't know if I knew that it was gonna take off as big as it did, but I just enjoyed it. And it was like free TV, where right. it wasn't like reality TV. Right. So it was, it was a pretty cool time. Um, I used to watch uh, CTFXC, uh, which is Charles Trippy vlogs. And I think he still has the number, like the number one Guinness Book of World Records for daily vlogs. That's so many. Like, How many is it? I think it's around like 5,000. Dang, that's a lot. That's I, a long time. I don't time. think I've done. I mean, I haven't even brushed my teeth 5,000 days in a row. <laughs> so to yeah, make like, a video <laughs> for 5,000 days, that's amazing. Yeah, especially when it's like all homebrew and you're just like, oh, I, I had to film today and then I have to edit today. Dang. Because it would just be like the day prior. I like that term too, homebrew. It's yeah. like DIY, but... Yeah, homebrew videos because you're not outsourcing it. Like yeah. Max, our, our boss, like he can outsource it to us to create the content. Yeah. He just kind of does, like he just... Exists. Does, exists. Live yeah, your exactly. life. I, well, I think that, you know, and you started off talking about how YouTube comments are a place where people actually interact. And the smart thing that you did was I didn't have more than like five comments per video. So yeah, you're right. like, all right, the likelihood he reads this is very high. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to actually respond. And, yeah. And you were just like, shoot your shot. And I, I, I guess I saw that you needed someone who could help you or someone just a shadow yeah um because you were pretty busy with projects at that time you're kind of like spread out right? yeah what yeah I, i'm curious what video or like when did you recognize that um i think it was when at one point jr shared your vlog because he was in it oh that's right and i was like was oh, that the one when cool. he quit yeah i'm pretty sure he quit the queue and yeah. we were like we made a big deal about all right we need to film your initial reaction like right after you leave mm -hmm. so jr um is my best friend from growing up and he was a radio station dj in portland maine at the queue and he actually tweeted out uh, at the video i think or instagram and he was like hey guys my last day is going to be in two weeks so these are like my last five shows and he really was adamant like about getting to do those shows and he didn't get a chance to do it because obviously the higher up saw his tweet and they brought him in and they let him go. They're like, and so he was, <laughs> he was pissed. And yeah. so I said, all right, well, I'm going to film you going there that day. We drove downtown. And then I said, then hop in the car and give me your thoughts. Mm. So while he was inside getting fired, I did a vlog about, all right, this is what probably is going down, blah, blah, <laughs> blah. And then he came out and he had a really clear head. Um, yeah, he took that pretty well, honestly, for how, mm -hmm. how it unfolded. But I feel like in that video, at some point, we talk about how I'm doing freelance, and he is like, well, I guess I have to DJ now. How am I going to feed myself? Yeah, and I think I saw, like, because Maine's a fairly small state in terms of content producers. There's not and a And I was like... And not, I, not a lot of vloggers. No, especially not. Um, one person that I watched for a long time didn't even realize he lived in Maine was Ant Venom. He has like five million I had no idea. You were like, this guy's in Maine. I'm like, okay. He has the YouTube plate. Yeah. And, uh, so it's kind of funny. I was like, oh, okay. So there are people here making content. And then I saw Dave and saw that he had the quality and kind of angle that I wanted. 
in terms of like what he wanted mm -hmm. to make, which was just no really near. I didn't want. even have a hundred subs, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't really care about the size at the time. I just saw kind of the scope of the work. And I was like, okay, this guy's actually gone to college for it. I, I wasn't even in college yet, I don't think. Was I? I don't think you might have been. It was like one freshman, year. Freshman one year. year. Yeah, so I was just kind of like dipping my toe in the water in terms of, uh, in mm -hmm. terms of content creation. Um, but it was, it was cool to get that response right back. Too. But you wanted to do content because I run into a lot of people who are like, yo, what camera? Yo, can I help you? Yo, this and that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, maybe you can, I don't know. Do you have the skills? Like, yeah. you got to actually like really like holler at people and want to do it. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, at that time I was trying to make my own content and trying to enhance my skills. Like I would just go out and take photos of random things, post them on my Instagram. I wasn't really making videos about it as much. Um, but I tried to, and uh, I do have a few videos on this channel if you go through them. There's a good amount of videos on this channel. Um, but it, it was cool to see that I can be carried uh, in terms of quality to a certain degree. Yeah. Because you kind of taught me, like, okay, here's what content should look like. Here's kind of how you set up. Here's... And I'm pretty, like, brutally honest. Like, I'll say, yo, that shot sucks. Yeah. Now, <laughs> it's, is it usable? Mm, maybe for not. youtube <laughs> like sure but when you actually break it down i have to treat every video as if this was someone else's and somebody's paying me for it mm -hmm. and that's how you should treat your own content for your own channel like if somebody paid you to make this would you be proud or would you say you know you need to watch this this is awesome and if you can't answer that then you have to do it again yeah you, you have gotta to reshoot, re reshoot. <laughs> and you like have to Dave has like told me several times like okay this doesn't work my shooting skills were very subpar like three months ago and I just watched the recent video we made for Max and far surpassed he was using a 5d which doesn't have automatic uh, focus and it had the lens is stabilized but that was much much more stable like Matt had this thing where he would like lean I don't know because it was like <laughs> comfortable to like hold when he was using a Joby so yeah you'd see the horizon line kind of start to slip um, and, and you'll realize too like if you have ever tried to get a mentor or if somebody out there is like you're working for somebody or interning if they're not giving you shit all the time and criticizing you uh in a productive way or you know just like make like yeah i guess just like making fun of you here and there like yeah if they're not doing that you should be worried Mm -hmm. because that means you're not like part of the fold, but like part of the wolf pack. And they don't see a use for you. And they're just like, point. when they're withholding info, that's how you know you're kind of like on your way out, you're obsolete. Mm -hmm. So taking the mentor to mentee mentality, how was it for you? Like, cause that was your first like intern slash mentor, Ever. right? Yeah. So going from when you saw your professors in college kind of using like, you guys are essentially their mentee. And I have, yeah, my mentor, Mike, I actually still work with him a lot. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot about that relationship dynamic from Mike because he still hires me and he pays me through my university to help him shoot a documentary or he's like, yeah, like when you're free, just let me know. Like, I'd love to hire you to shoot, to edit. And um, he's out in Cali. So and like, he's in California. You travel, so, you get to go meet people. Clearly network. that relationship was strong enough. And I graduated in 2009, it's 2019. We still not only are friends, but actually work together. Mm -hmm. And that was a person who is one of the first people to film Cops, the show Cops. Um, who, who doesn't like Cops, let's be honest. Yeah, he used to produce in um, LA and you know he's, he's filmed with um, a number of notable people. So when I was taking class from him, he was still making projects. And that's how immediately I bought into him. And I was like, okay, you're credible because you're doing it. You're not a professor who's just telling me what to do. Like I can see that you're making stuff and you're showing me dailies and you're showing me cuts. So I was, be able, I was able to believe him right away. And I think with you and me, you can see that I'm still making my own content yeah. or somebody else's. So you're like, well, this guy's not full of shit. He's actually making content. And so, that's kind of the thing. So I'm still in school. I have one, one more year left. And there's not really a professor that I can just like name off that would be producing content now or having a realistic expectation of what to do after, mm -hmm. which is something that you were like, oh, this is how the workforce is when you're a freelance videographer or you know, you're owning your own business. This is how you get paid. Yeah. You have to get paid. Because um, at the end of the day, I'm not paying, to call, paying for college just to get free gigs. And it's, it's, it's tricky, right? 
at first, you think with an intern, well, it should be unpaid or it's for credit or it's for experience. And it is kind of for all those things. But I recognize with you that I was making money and I'd rather share part of the cut for hustle, mm -hmm. even if you don't have all the skills yet, because then it shows you, all right, people do value hard work, even if it's kind of like messy. And it's I'm, as long as you're directing it in the right path, that's important to me. So I value that. And now that you have, you know, your graphic skills are far beyond a lot of people that I work with my age. Mm -hmm. So you found like, okay, well, I'm really good at this. You're, you're like, I'm actually better than most people at this one thing, but shooting, I need a lot of help with. Yeah. So your, your strengths outweigh your weaknesses. Like, you know, you double down on strengths and then you can mask your weaknesses. It's kind of like, you know, if you have a UFC game, you have that triangle, right? So you're like, okay, I'm going to have like agility and stamina <laughs> and then your strength is kind of low. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's like editing graphics and then shooting is kind of low, but right. eventually we'll become a well-rounded machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, you know, I think the most important part about the relationship is the mentee has to be a pest. You have to be annoying, mm -hmm. not to the point that your personality is annoying because yeah. that's not, it's that you have to like constantly ask, 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 ask. Yeah and want more responsibility and want to do more things, you ask the right questions, the questions become better. Because if you stop doing that, like I don't have time to think for you or tell you what to do. You kind of have to figure Make that out. Make these decisions on my own time, yeah. Yeah, and if you ask me the right questions, it leads you in the right direction. So mm -hmm. most people think, well, it's up to the mentor to impart the knowledge. It is, but you've got to pull it out of me. Yeah, because literally as, but like the more we work together, I can be like, oh, Dave wouldn't like this or Dave would like this. He so anticipates it's just, things. It's easy for me to make decisions based on that. Um, and then also in implementing my own creative skill. So Yeah. I think we should do a couple parts on this series. Yeah. There's so much to talk about in the mentor-mentee relationship. Um, and I think it works best because we're actually working on the same thing together, the same business project versus me taking time out of my day to just do like one-on-one. -on -one. Most people think, oh, you're going to sit down and talk about how to be better. It's mm -hmm. like that stuff just happens on the fly. It's just like we might have a five-minute conversation here and there and you pick up what you can or you pick up more probably for me just watching what I'm doing. Yeah, just I spin around. I'm like, oh, Dave is on the phone writing notes, talking to X amount of clients a day, things like that. And I think Gary Vee does it very well with his 5149. So if you know your value that you're bringing to someone, you should be um, bringing, bringing a bigger value than they can give to you almost. Always. And it's like, you want to have the leverage. In this, it's kind of both ways. So it's like Dave's bringing values that I can't learn on myself, and I'm bringing values that you can't get from, from where you're at. Either. Yeah. So I don't want to spend the extra time doing graphics when Matt's clearly better at doing that than I am. And, and he's saving me time. So both those things are good. Even if exactly. we were the same level on one skill like graphics, I still would rather have Matt do it because I get that time back to do something else. Yeah, so there's that value there. And then you're helping me with camera work, you're helping me find clients, mm -hmm. kind of get the whole business mindset of this, of this industry. And the, in the perfect world, what happens and is edits, obviously. <laughs> Matt finds somebody as his mentee to help him mm -hmm. and then that cycle just continues and continues and continues mm -hmm. and you can build a business model right off of that yeah so it's it's pretty it's a pretty interesting thing to try to find your mentor but once you do see someone that you can hold a value in and like click with personality wise and, and work wise because like we're around each other pretty much 24 hours all a day. the time in the sweaty apartment with no air conditioning and yeah in the studio which has nice air conditioning exactly so it's like we, we have work time and then we have like, okay, we're gonna go out to the bar, we're gonna get a drink, we're gonna mm -hmm. just talk about life. You have to actually enjoy the person to the point that you would spend the whole day with them, mm -hmm. multiple days in a row. That's, the vibe is really important. Obviously, the foot in the door is you actually have the skills. Yeah. That's like, like having a resume. You would just need that. Yeah. And then if you actually have a good vibe in chemistry, then it's like, all right, now then there's a chance that it'll work. Because then you blur that line between work and enjoying what you just do every day and mm -hmm. so, like I've had jobs where I'm like oh I don't want to go to work tomorrow like I have to I like block my day out and I'm like uh, they're from eight to four 
And right. it's like, dude, that that's, sucks. But it's like this, I'm like, oh, I'll stay from 8 to 10 p.m., 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I'm like, oh, the day's done already. Like I had more stuff that I could be doing. The days, the days do fly by here like yeah. crazy. Because we're always working on something, mm-hmm. producing either the next idea or the next graphic or thumbnails, anything like that. I mean, and my last thoughts would be you don't have a sense of entitlement and that's why we can work together because mm-hmm. a lot of people come to me or even to you now and they're like, well, what do I get? It's like, that's just not the right mindset. That's not the right question. Like, I don't know what you get. That's yeah. really for you to decide what you want to get out of it. Like, I think I'm not going to just give you something. I drove, so I drove to Dave's studio. It was in the last video. We, we put up that vlog clip. I, I didn't get anything out of that day, like monetarily. I was like, dude, I'm just going to go visit. Plant that, seed. Yeah. And then I think I got like a gig with JR. It was like 50 bucks, but it was like To help him set up some night. gear. And, and like I, was a, like, I was like, this is fine. Like I'm getting paid half 50, of what I could right, It's 50 bucks, but it's like hourly. Yeah. you're getting to observe a professional mm-hmm. in their setting. Yeah. And I was like, I'm getting paid. That's like crazy That's a bonus. Itself. When yeah. you're in high school or college or whatever. Yeah. It was just like freshman year. So I'm still... It was like the summer, so I was like working at a pizza place, I think. So it was like whatever. Making, if let's say it was ten bucks an hour, making that in like a few hours. But, but you're like not, slaving. You're not behind the uh, register. You're not getting all the like grease on your face from pizzas, mm-hmm. like. And it's nice. like also when you're working in a in a place like that, like you don't get to see people's reactions to the actual product that you're doing. Right. If that makes sense. If you're it cook, does. if you're cooking yeah. food, you're not like. Watching the table yeah. and be like, oh my People God. People are like, yo, that pizza was amazing. You crushed it. Yeah. But now it's <laughs> like with this, you can have direct feedback. Like watching all of Max's videos, we can go through the comments and literally people will be like, oh, this, this video is dope. Oh, this is helped me a dope. ton, right? Yeah. And so it's cool to see that direct feedback. Yeah. It's probably the closest thing to instant gratification you can get mm-hmm. in a job. It's just they get some feed, positive feedback, even from Max being like, yo, that was dope. A lot yeah. of people are watching it, like good traction, like good title, whatever. It's, something's concrete. Like the small compliments go a long way because it yeah. kind of boosts your next mindset when you're going approaching the next project. Yeah. So it's been a beneficial relationship for me. I never looked at it as being a mentor in the beginning. And then as it went along, I realized, okay, that's what this has become. Yeah. And it was really up to Matt to decide if he wanted to continue coming back to get the knowledge. Because in my shoes, I'm like, well, I need to find somebody. Mm -hmm. This is choice number one. And if that doesn't work out, I got to move on to plan B. Exactly. And obviously, I'm still here. So So it's worked out. Traveled a few thousand miles uh, from Maine. Just a couple. A few. Yeah, a couple. A little bit. So I think we're going to wrap this part of the mentor-mentee early work series. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy. This is episode two. Uh, we're going to get back on track. We missed a few weeks. But it's been kind of hectic um, planning shoots, but I'm going to get on that. Again, that's something that I'm learning from Dave, kind of planning around your day. Always be shooting. Um, always be shooting and always be making content. But thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please comment, rate, like, and subscribe if you haven't already for more early work. Um, also, next week, I'll be putting out some new tutorial videos on how to make your own content if you are unfamiliar or have oh, questions. I'm going to watch that one. Yeah, dude. All right. See you guys.